a combustion analysis allows you to determine the empirical formula of an unknown compound. If the compound contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, oxygen during a combustion, all of the carbon is converted to CO2 and all of the hydrogen is converted to H2O. And by capturing both of these species and measuring the amount produced, that's going to allow us to determine our empirical formula. Notice, during a combustion, an unknown amount of oxygen gas is added. Combustion means that you are reacting something with oxygen to produce CO2 and water. So we don't know how much oxygen we are adding. To find the amount of oxygen in the compound, we cannot use these masses of CO2 and H2O. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. In the first step of a combustion analysis, you want to find the number of moles of CO2 and H2O produced by dividing by their molecular weight. Once you've done this, you then find the number of moles of carbon and the number of moles of hydrogen produced by using the molecular formulas of CO2 and H2O respectively. Once we have the number of moles, we then convert moles to grams to find the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen produced during the combustion. We do this by multiplying by their atomic weight. Once we have those grams, we then find the grams of the oxygen by realizing that the mass of the sample must be equal to the grams of hydrogen plus the grams of carbon plus the grams of oxygen. The original mass of the sample was given in the question and we have just determined the grams of hydrogen and the grams of carbon. If we subtract those two values off, what we're left with is grams of oxygen. We then convert those grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen by dividing by the atomic weight of oxygen and then you have the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in your unknown sample. From here on out, it's very much like the percent composition formulas that we talked about in the previous sections, where you want to convert these number of moles to an empirical formula. So you set up a tentative empirical formula and then divide by the smallest number of moles and round to the nearest whole number. This will give you the empirical formula. You can also continue on to find the molecular formula of the unknown, but to do that you will need the molecular weight, and the steps are exactly the same as we have done previously. So let's look at an example of this. Oxalic acid is an organic compound, and it's known to only contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We combust 0.513 grams of oxalic acid. When we do this, we're able to capture 0.501 grams of CO2, and 0.103 grams of H2O. We then want to find the empirical formula for oxalic acid. First thing we want to determine is the number of moles of CO2 and H2O that we have captured here in our combustion. We do that by dividing by the corresponding molecular weight of the compound. So we take our 0.501 grams of CO2 that we captured and divide by the molecular weight of CO2 to determine that we have created 0.0114 mole of CO2. We captured 0.103 grams of H2O. We divide by the molecular weight of H2O to find that we have produced 0.00572 moles of H2O. Now we want to find the number of moles of hydrogen and carbon. We do this by looking at the ratios inside of the molecular formula of the corresponding compound. Inside of CO2, for every one mole of CO2, we have one mole of carbon. The moles of CO2 cancel and we're left with mole of carbon. So it's a one to one mole ratio. So during the combustion, we have created or captured 0.0114 mole of carbon. With H2O, there is two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of H2O. The moles of H2O cancel. The two here remains. And so we multiply our number of moles of H2O by two to get the number of moles of H. So we're going to need these moles of carbon and hydrogen later on in the problem, but now we need to find the number of moles of oxygen that was inside of our original sample. We do this by taking the moles of carbon and moles of hydrogen and multiplying by their molecular weight to find the number of grams of carbon and grams of hydrogen in the sample. We take the number of moles of carbon in the original sample and multiply by the atomic weight of carbon to find out how many grams of carbon were in the original sample. We do the same thing with hydrogen, multiply by the atomic weight of hydrogen to determine the number of grams of hydrogen in the original sample. We then want to find the number of grams of oxygen, so we take the original mass of the sample, which was given in the original question as 
513 grams, and we subtract off of it the number of grams of hydrogen that were in the original sample and the number of carbons that were in the original sample. And what will be left is the number of grams of oxygen in our original sample. We then divide by the molecular weight of oxygen to find the number of moles that were in our original sample. So we take this gram of oxygen, divide by the atomic weight of oxygen to get the number of moles of oxygen in our original compound. So now we have the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that were in our original compound. We then write a tentative empirical formula where we write the elemental symbol and then write the number of moles in the original sample as a subscript. We then divide through by the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number was 0 0.0114. From this, we will get the empirical formula. So we divide through by 0 0.0114, and we get our empirical formula is C1H1O2. And in this step, if you were to determine a number that was slightly off from a whole number, you would just go ahead and round, because our empirical formula needs to be in whole numbers.